All right, if you're still with me, it's day 25 and we're waiting for the puzzle to open. Of course, you're watching the video, so the puzzle's already open, but <laughs> I'm waiting to watch the puzzle open. This is the almost full animation that we've got on the left. And after yesterday, I'm looking forward to a potentially light day today. All right, three, two, one. Let's get at it. Snow overload. Still somehow without snow, you go to the last place you haven't checked, the center of Snow Island, directly below the waterfall. Someone's been trying to fix the problem. Everything's been wired together. Error 2023. And there's a support line. Power overload. Too many components plugged in. You see a big reset button. System overload. Connected components would require power to at least equal to at least 100 stars. How many did you say are plugged in? Disconnect at least half the equipment. You only have time to disconnect three wires. <laughs> Somebody left a wiring diagram. This is our wiring diagram. Name of the component, colon, list of other components. Connections aren't directional. Okay. Find the three wires you need to disconnect in order to divide the components into two separate groups. I feel like this could be done without code, but maybe we just dot visit. How big is our input? Day 25, input one. Oh, this is a lot of input. I wonder if there are any ways of doing the dot viz layout to show like, hey, these two things are connected by three. Let's do this. Let's take, it was yesterday the pet graph day? No, 23rd was the pet graph day. Here's the dot code and here's the graph code. So let's dump all this in here. Let's uncomment the dot stuff. Let's get rid of basically everything. This needs to be to do at the end. Let's bring in pet graph, I guess. Pet graph workspace equals true. So this is iterating over the grid and adding stuff. We won't need most of this, I don't think. What is our value gonna be for the graph here? I don't know, I have X2 or something. No, just a string slice, I guess. I guess we need glam. No, we don't need glam because we're not gonna work with that. String slice, node index. What did our pet graph imports look like the other day? Algo dot prelude. Prelude is the thing we're missing. So a quick parse of this would be keys and separated lists of values. I can't think of anything in terms of kind of what the makeup is gonna be like or like how we would figure out that only three connected. String slice, I result, string slice, hash map probably. We probably want a hash map. Separated list one, line ending, separated pair, alpha one, tags, colon space. We'll see if the space is actually uh, relevant later. Separated, separated list one. And this is gonna be separated by just space, right? Space one and alpha one again. Drop in the input. This will not give us a hash map out of the gate. Uh, this needs to be a hash map of string slice to what? Vec of string slice, I guess. Missed, missed one of my little signs. There we go. And then this is not gonna be a hash map. So we do let, let's just not make this a hash map yet. I guess the parse doesn't need to be a hash map. It's gonna be a vec of vec of string slice. It's gonna be a vec of string slice vec of string slice where everything is an ID. So parse should work for us. Let's do that. It's gonna call them items or nodes, I guess. Parse input, expect, should parse. Let's get rid of most of this code for the moment so that we can run the parse, debug the nodes to make sure that we are parsing everything correctly. And then I don't know the answer to it right now. So I'm just gonna kick our tests going. Day 25 and we've got JQT with three rsh with three i don't see anything out of order here let's check the bottom frs q and r lhk lsr i wonder if it's going to be something as simple as these are connected to the most other so we've got this vec what do we do with it we do have to introduce each of these as nodes so i don't know that all of the nodes have keys so if we did something like nodes.iter we, we don't get the reverse links, do we? We just get so like JQT. I'm just double clicking instead of doing what I was going to do. All of them show up as being multied. I don't think we have any in our actually in our input that are unique. So we'll just assume that we have everything we need. Um, do we need this hash map? I guess this is our hash map of string slice to node index. So let's do nodes.iter. And this gives us key and nodes, right? And because we have these, we can do both the add node and the add edge. The question is, since we don't have a list of uniques, I think we will have to 
reduce this to a single list first. Anyway, so we do have to do what I was going to do. So nodes.iter.map dot dot or flat map, I guess. My keyboard just stopped working. That's not good. All right, so we've got the key and values. And what we really need is like key and then like a spread of values. This seems not like it's gonna work. I'm gonna do something silly, clone values, right? V is equals clones values, mute. And then views.push key. And then we return Vs. And this is flat map. We don't need flatten here. And then our issue is we didn't call it as a function. Okay. So we've got not the uniques. We need to do dot unique here if I can spell it correctly, which does come from iter tools. So we got to bring in the trait. So we've got our uniques. I think that's how we want to build our nodes. So when we iterate over this, we don't want to iterate over nodes. We want to iterate over uniques again, if I can spell it. And then this is just a node and we're going to keep this ID list around node, right? And node There's a collect issue here from double string slice. That's fine. So we've got a node map now. We debug that node map out and we're gonna have string slices to IDs. So we've got an ID for everything. I think that also tells us the insertion order in this case, which is funny. And then for the relationships, we need to nodes.iter. I guess we could do for node in nodes.iter, which is gonna be what key node in nodes.iter, uh, graph.add edge, node map key, node map node and then weight is one because we don't care but we need to do a double here for node in values is what i'm going to call it we're going to change this to values and that should give us a graph and we get rid of these and we write this file out assuming we did everything correctly this should because we're running a test drop into our directory here we're going to grab this this is our preview so we need to find the three and I think it's PZ, L, C, M, G, and J, Q, T, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Six and nine are what we're looking for. So if we run the same thing, day 25, part one, this should panic, but I'm not really looking for it to not panic. I'm looking for our graph dot and the preview that we can hopefully see from it. Uh, how do I zoom out? <laughs> So we end up with this huge thing. I can't scroll that way. Can we look at this at 20% size or something? Oh, there we go. So we've got these huge like situation here, but we see these three lines. So what are those three lines and how many are on each side? Cause that's it. I don't really want to hand count these. Although now we can, now that we've seen that. So do I spend the next five minutes counting or do I find a way to do this programmatically? Guess my other question, we see the three lines here, right? Like it's very clear. Even in the layout, this is an undirected graph. Technically, they aren't the only ones connected to these nodes. What is we're using a digraph right now, right? So if we run our test after doing an ungraph, oh, I know the test, the test, not the, and we get our graph dot. We look at the preview. We now have undirected. So I ran the min spanning tree algorithm just to see what it does. This is CMG to BVB split down. We need CMG to BVB. We need JQT to NVD, and we need PZL to HFX. If we look at our input, CMG to BVB doesn't have anything special about it. JQT, nothing super special there. PZL, nothing that I can see. They all have NVD in them, which is interesting. So do others though. JQT to NVD, this cut gives us one, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If we can make that cut, that works. I don't know that we can make that cut though. Because if we run that on our other one, let's move this in here because and we look at it, I don't think we get, yeah, I wouldn't know how to use that to figure it out. What are the dominators? This is one thing that I didn't, like we were looking at the other day and I didn't quite understand or I, yeah, anyway. I think if we compute the dominators, if we do something like call some random one, the root like RSH or something. So dominators graph and then node map RSH, right? And then we just debug that and see what it does. Not found in scope because I didn't bring it into scope. That makes sense. Not a function. Oh, simple fast. This gives us everything. That's weird, right? How many nodes do we have? I don't think we have the, <laughs> 
the URL doesn't even send us anywhere. Oh, every path from root to B contains A. So simple fast then has us give the root. I guess not every path would because we have three paths. So that's not gonna work for us either. So now it's time to Google stuff. I found myself on this page, minimum cut. This is just a function that doesn't implement maybe Stower and Wagner, simple minimum cut algorithm, which brings us to the Wikipedia page, of course, for the Stower Wagner algorithm, a recursive algorithm to solve the minimum cut problem in undirected weighted graphs with non-negative weights. That's what we have. Shrink the graph by merging the most intensive vertices until the graph only contains two combined vertex sets. At each phase, the algorithm finds the minute minimum ST cut for two vertices, S and T chosen at its will. Then the algorithm shrinks the edge between S and T to search for non-ST cuts. The minimum cut found in all phases will be the minimum cut of the graph. So recursive graph traversal? Well, not traversal, but store the cut in which the last remaining vertex is by itself. Shrink G by merging the two vertices. Okay, so do we have a merge function in pet graph? And in the minimum cut phase, the subset A of the graph's vertices grows, starting with an arbitrary single vertex until A is equal to V. In each step, the vertex, which is outside of A, but most tightly connected with A is added to the set A. So is this just picking two forever? If we do a little bit more Googling, we can probably find something to help us explain the algorithm. What are minimum cuts? Those are the things we're looking to cut. The edges are the cut, meaning that those separate the two subgraphs. The subgraph has the min cut weight of four. Since the sum of the edge weights on the cut is exactly that, we will have ones everywhere. So I think that's not what we're interested in. The intuition of the algorithm. Prim, the crucial <laughs> observation behind the algorithm is very similar to this other algorithm that you also don't know. Minimum spanning tree. Stower Wagner is basically the same in reverse. We're taking the full graph, starting at any vertex and doing a maximum adjacency search which results in finding two vertices, S and T. Those are the last two vertices we found during the search. S and T are then merged. Effectively, T will be removed from the graph and its edges will transfer to S, summing the weights in both cases, summing the weights in case both pointed to the same vertex. T is kept as part of our partition and we keep track of the cut weight of T, okay? Now doing this recursively, we find ourselves growing our partition and shrinking the other graph. Inevitably, we end up with a graph that only has two vertices, and this is where we stop the algorithm. While we're doing this, we keep track of the partitions that had the smallest cut weight so far. This is smallest cut weight set of t's at the end is our first partition, and the remainder of the vertices in the graph is our second partition. The smallest cut weight set of t's at the end is our first partition. So we basically do this algorithm, uh, we sort by cut weight, and then keep half of the bottom ones. It's listed as a two-phase algorithm here. A cut phase and a minimum, no, a cut phase and a minimum cut given in pseudocode that isn't explained at all. While A is not equal to V, add A to the most tightly connected. Maximum adjacency search. The intuition is that we want to traverse the graph in order of its maximum weight towards the set of vertices we have so far. The largest sum of weights. So we search for the next most connected node or, uh, yeah, node. So they said it was similar to min spanning tree, but in reverse. And this does an edge sort. So I guess my option is either implement this algorithm or count for five minutes. If I had counted for five minutes, I would already be done. So I guess I'm gonna go implement this algorithm. Um, I will be back in a bit. Okay, so long story short, I was doing a bunch of research, trying to figure out how to implement this, trying to understand the algorithm better. Uh, and I happened across a crate that implements the Stower Wagner min cut on pet graph. So this makes it really easy, obviously, because we don't have to implement it ourselves, but it's also nice to get the reference. So I've spent some time digging into the algorithm and I was starting to implement it, obviously. It's a reasonable amount of code and it's actually kind of nice to have the implementation to look at. If you look at the names of the functions in here, it looks like they keep the same phasing as described on the Wikipedia page that we were looking at earlier, as well as the same naming. So if you're interested in learning how the algorithm works, it does look like not only is that here, but it also shows you sort of how to iterate over uh, pet graph graphs, find edges, do things with nodes, etc. So I'll leave a link to this library. Uh, the source code obviously is on docs.rs. And if we run this test, uh, our test passes because, you know, I was testing it out. The actual usage comes down to we did all of our graph buildup already. We talked about that. And then once we have the graph, we need to use the store Wagner min cut function. 
And this function here is the cost of the edge, which for us is always one. We don't have interesting edges, but if you put E here, you would see an E edge reference, which you could then go find in the docs and figure out how to determine what the cost of that edge is. But all of our edges are one, so I didn't even bother getting that number from the edge itself. And then this uses a custom result type, which is just a type alias, but it's a custom result type. We run that. What we get back is a result with an option inside of it because the function itself could fail. And then the result could also be that there is none, I think, from my understanding. So we unwrap the result, we unwrap the option, because for us, there always will be one. And that gives us the cut size. So this ends up being three for the test input, as well as the nodes in the partition. This is the full set of nodes. So if I like to do down here or something, and it panicked, and we say debugged cut size, and the nodes in the partition, then what we get out of this when it fails is the cut size, which is three, which is what we need, and all of the node IDs in the partition. So the partition for this algorithm is, it basically builds up this partition of nodes on one side and like sort of leaves everything else. So this is all of the nodes on one side of the partition. That is my understanding of it anyway. So we can run this day 25 part one, we get an answer fairly quickly inside of five seconds. Not the fastest runtime I've ever seen for anything that we've done, but definitely not the slowest either. And that gives us one gold star. So part two is you climb over the weather machines under giant springs and narrowly avoid a pile of pipes as you find and disconnect three wires. A moment after you disconnect the last wire, the big reset button makes a small ding noise. Power required is now 50 stars. Out of the corner of your eye, you notice goggles and loose fitting hard hat peeking at you from behind an ultra crucible. You think you see a faint glow, but before you can investigate, you hear another small ding. Power required is now 49 stars. Please supply the necessary stars and push the button to restart the system. You have enough stars to push the big red button. Let's push the button then and see what happens. Ooh, we get a little snow animation. That's nice. You supply all 50 stars and restart global snow production. As you reach the edge of Snow Island, you can already tell from way up here that everyone will have a white Christmas this year after all. Apparently you get highlighted Easter eggs for each puzzle now. So I suppose we can go find those. So for day one, which I'm pretty sure everybody has done, there's and here. An Easter egg on and? It is not highlighting. I guess, would you like to play a game? Like, would you like to play a game? That was an awful imitation. Oh, there we go. No, the elf's name is not W-O-P-R. <laughs> That's funny. Is that in everything no matter what? I guess so. There's just title tags on random spans. So this one then, my hope is that this abomination of a run-on sentence somehow conveys the chaos of being hastily loaded into a trebuchet. That's fun. All right, well, this is the first year that I've gotten 50 stars. So I guess I'll do a video about that. <laughs> We've got a number of people who have finished up and a number of people who are pretty close to finishing. Again, I do these right when they come out, so it's only been an hour and a half. So I anticipate more people will finish. But I guess that's it for this year, y'all. If you're still sticking with it, congrats. If this is just your viewing of the last days of problems, then thanks for hanging with us with the videos. I hope y'all had a fun time and I'll probably do a recap video at some point. So have a great rest of your day, rest of your month, rest of your vacation, whatever you got going on, and I'll see you.